We use the term arthritis a lot within our community. But what actually is arthritis? What does it mean? Why does it happen? Why is it painful? And most importantly, how can we treat it? To answer these questions, we need to start by looking inside our joints. Now this is a normal knee joint, and you can see that the ends of the thigh bone and the top of the shin bone are covered in this smooth substance. Now this smooth substance is called articular cartilage. My grandpa, back in the day, would have referred to this as gristle. Now most of the joints in your body rely upon articular cartilage to function normally. When I look inside a normal, healthy joint, the articular cartilage looks beautifully white, smooth and shiny. It's also quite soft and spongy when you gently touch it with a probe. Articular cartilage creates a smooth surface that enables your joints to glide without pain. If you didn't have articular cartilage, you would literally have bone grinding on bone within your joints. Articular cartilage also acts like a cushion, protecting the bone beneath from shock. Now most people tend to think of bone as being dry and lifeless, like a skeleton in a museum. However, inside your body, bone is very much alive. Living bone is full of blood and it bleeds when it becomes bruised. The bone near your joints might be hard on the outside, but it's quite soft on the inside. It actually looks and feels very similar to the honeycomb inside a chocolate bar. Now this bone, which is called metaphyseal bone, is quite fragile and it needs protection from the articular cartilage to survive. A loss of articular cartilage within a joint is the crucial first step in the development of arthritis. A lot of other changes do occur in the joint, but it all begins with the loss of cartilage. The articular cartilage in an arthritic joint looks very rough and it cracks and peels off the bone. It looks nothing like the normal cartilage we see inside a healthy joint. Eventually, it wears away to bare bone. Without the smooth gliding and cushion from cartilage, the bone beneath becomes bruised, swollen and very painful. It literally starts to bleed, and we can see this bleeding and bruising very clearly on an MRI scan. Normal bone on an MRI scan looks black, but if the bone is bruised, there are patches of white almost like somebody has spray painted the bone with white paint. Remember that I said that bone is a living tissue? Well, bone also has a very rich nerve supply and it becomes very painful when injured or inflamed. And this is one of the major causes of the dull, achy pain that can keep you awake at night and even hurt when you're not moving. But articular cartilage damage is just the starting point of arthritis. And this is a really important concept to understand. As arthritis progresses, it eventually involves your entire joint. Cartilage, bone, muscles, ligaments, tendons, and more. The waterproof lining of your joint is called synovium. And this also becomes red, swollen, and inflamed. The synovium produces excess fluid, and this is why patients with arthritic joints often describe so much swelling. The strong tissue around the outside of an arthritic joint called the joint capsule, becomes scarred from the chronic inflammation of arthritis, and it begins to permanently thicken and tighten. Imagine a tight band slowly constricting your joint over time. And this is the main reason why an arthritic joint becomes so stiff. Stiffness, weakness and pain, and the effect this has upon daily activities, are the major symptoms that patients describe as their arthritis worsens. And they are all evidence that arthritis is now involving your entire joint, not just the articular cartilage or joint surface. The most common form of arthritis that most people have heard of is osteoarthritis. We often describe this as wear and tear arthritis, as our joints do tend to break down over time with ongoing use. Imagine your knee, for example, bending backwards and forwards literally hundreds of thousands of times a year. It's amazing that our joints last as long as they do with everything we put them through. Some people are more prone to developing arthritis than others, and this is often because of our genetics. If your parents or grandparents develop bad arthritis, then there is an increased risk that you may also develop it. However, there are also other factors that play a role, such as your weight, occupation, 
regular high impact activities, and previous trauma to a joint, like a fracture or sporting injury. Inflammatory conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis, are another cause of cartilage damage within your joint. While the underlying cause of these conditions is different to simple wear and tear osteoarthritis, the end result is the same, damage to the articular cartilage within your joint. And this sets off all the other changes in a joint that we've just described. One of the common questions I get from patients, especially those that are trying to avoid surgery, is what they should do about their arthritis pain. Now this is a very complex topic and every patient's health history is unique. So ultimately you may need to discuss a lot of this with your general practitioner so they can give you specific advice. I thought I'd give you a recent summary on what some of the latest evidence shows about pain relief for arthritis. The first thing to say is that somewhat surprisingly, many patients can achieve excellent pain management without the use of medications. The best person to speak to about this is your physiotherapist. Now many physiotherapists have experience with something called the GLAD program. Now the GLAD program is a specific physiotherapy program that helps patients with arthritic pain, especially of the hip and knee. One of the aims of the GLAD program is to keep you as strong and fit and active as possible even though you have arthritis pain. The problem is if you don't move and keep active your joint will become stiff and it will also become weak. And this ends up into a bad cycle where you have stiffness and weakness and pain and it tends to snowball and you might need medication. Now a physiotherapist is not going to be able to cure every patient, especially if they have severe arthritis. However, we know that these types of programs can be very successful in helping you manage your pain from arthritis. They can also help to improve your function. The other thing to keep in mind is, if you do eventually end up needing surgery for your arthritic joint, the stronger you are and the better condition you're in before surgery, the better you'll cope with the operation and the quicker you'll recover after. So there's lots of benefits of speaking to your physiotherapist. Maintaining a healthy body weight range is also an important part of controlling arthritis pain. Now the best person to start talking about this with is your GP. It's very hard to lose weight by yourself and you will need some support to do it. Your GP can also refer you, if required, to other healthcare practitioners, maybe a dietitian or a nutritionist, to help with your weight loss journey. If you go to your local chemist or health food shop, there will literally be an entire wall of supplements and many of them claim to help arthritis pain. The reality is that most of these supplements have a poor evidence base in actually reducing arthritis pain. On the flip side, most of them are safe and won't interact with your regular medications. However, there's no point in you spending your time and money on supplements if they don't have an evidence base of helping arthritic pain. The Australian National Health and Medical Research Council does not recommend, for example, taking glucosamine or chondroitin for joint pain. There's just not enough evidence to support its use. Now there is increasing interest in the scientific community about whether a natural supplement called turmeric, or the active ingredient which is called curcumin, works as a weak anti-inflammatory inside your body. At this stage, we can't really call either way whether there's benefit or not, but some people do tend to have some relief if they take it. I'd use the same approach with fish oil, is that you could trial it and if you're feeling benefit, continue it, and if you're not feeling benefit, then you could cease it. For years and years, many doctors, including myself, have advised our patients to take paracetamol or Panadol for arthritis pain. The most recent evidence shows that Panadol probably only has a very weak effect, if any, upon arthritis. Now this may surprise you, especially given some companies directly market paracetamol for arthritis pain. The good thing about paracetamol is that it is quite safe and it usually is okay for people to take regularly. Check with your GP if you're not sure. But the dose of Panadol you should be taking if you've got bad arthritic pain is two tablets with breakfast, lunch, dinner and before bed. If you don't take it regularly, it just won't work. Now Panadol works synergistically with other medications called anti-inflammatories. And by that I mean if you take an anti-inflammatory alone, you will not have as good an effect on your pain as if you take an anti-inflammatory and Panadol together. They work together to reduce your pain. 
There is excellent evidence that anti-inflammatories are very, very good at reducing pain from arthritis. In contrast to what many patients think, we don't take anti-inflammatories to reduce swelling in the joint. We take anti-inflammatories to reduce pain. Examples of common anti-inflammatories would include Voltaren, Nurofen and Advil. I tend to recommend the use of long-acting anti-inflammatories for patients with bad arthritis pain. And the two common names of these are Mobic and Celebrex. Now Mobic you just take once a day and it lasts for 24 hours. Celebrex you take morning and night and they are both sustained slow release medications. Now anti-inflammatories give great pain relief but they do have some risks. Especially in more elderly patients, they can interfere with your blood pressure and they can also reduce your kidney function and in some patients they can upset your tummy. So it's really important that you speak to your GP about whether or not these medications are appropriate for you. Ideally, if possible, we would take anti-inflammatories for a short course, say two to three weeks if our pain is very severe. It may be appropriate for some patients to take anti-inflammatory medication for longer periods of time, but again, that's an excellent question for your GP. There are lots of myths about cortisone injections. The reality is a cortisone injection is safe and it's not very painful for most people if the person giving it to you is very experienced. In my patients, I sometimes use them in the hip or knee or ankle, but it's really important you understand that they will not cure your arthritis and their effect is only temporary. It may only last weeks or months. But if you're having a very bad patch of pain and other things aren't helping, then a cortisone injection can be a temporary solution for that. There are lots of things that patients can waste time and money on that have been shown to have no benefit for arthritic pain. Now these include things like cold therapy, hot therapy, dry needling, orthotics, shoe modifications, or strapping and taping painful joints. All of these things have been shown to have no benefit in the management of arthritis. So even though they may not be overly harmful, I wouldn't recommend you do them because they're literally a waste of time and money. Unfortunately, Arthritis usually does worsen over time. The non-operative management we just spoke about will never cure you, but it may make life more livable. If you have ongoing pain and a decline in your function that is significant, then you may need to consider other options, such as joint replacement surgery. The Australian National Health and Medical Research Council describes joint replacement surgery as the most clinically effective and cost-effective treatment for end-stage osteoarthritis in appropriate patients. Over 120,000 joint replacements are performed every year in Australia, and the very high majority of these patients have a greatly improved quality of life. The decision about when is the right time for a joint replacement is a complex and personal one. However, I would strongly encourage you to make a decision based largely on your level of pain and loss of function. Or put simply, how badly is this arthritic joint affecting your quality of life? Seeking a broad range of opinions from healthcare professionals is also helpful. Your general practitioner and physiotherapist are great sounding boards. They are people you know and trust, and they know you and your health history very well. Now I have specific videos on my website that will take you through in detail everything you need to know about hip replacement and knee replacement surgery. So have a look there if you'd like some further information. If you'd like to talk to me about how to best manage your arthritis, then please call my rooms at any time. If you haven't already had appropriate scans, then I can arrange these prior to your appointment.